so. Yes, I was invited by Simon uh, concerning to work with communities. Then while the project evolved, uh, I wanted to work with a mirror. And it's a project, that, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a project that, that a lot of them has been developing for a lot of years. We've been working in a kind of movie for the last year and a half. We begin to talk about uh, to work with the uh, already, already existing video, which is called Man and the Mirror by Gil Sherving. Uh, yeah, we, we began to discuss and yeah, we came to this idea, with this idea to work with the idea of Mirror and with the idea of Alice, since Alice in Wonderland by Dean Burton was shot here. We began to work with the idea of the extras as the ones who are designed to fill an empty space in a way, to appear to be disappeared. We know each other for like a good 10 years and he wanted this project to be a video, a film, so he asked me to join him and collaborate. When we got the opportunity to work here, um, we started thinking of the idea of the extra as a person that sort of inscribes herself into the structure of a larger um, production or larger uh, dynamic set of hierarchies as well and it kind of gives up agency of the character they portray in the film and um, yeah we, we figure it might be a way to talk or address issues that connect um, like history of the space with history, like personal histories, or uh, work relations, workflows. Um, yeah, I, and, and the project demanded some sort of um, reflection about people in city and, and what sort of dynamics people have in each specific locality. Uh, like, like he said also, ideas of visibility and invisibility and then the extra being that character that is sort of visible but at the same time invisible is kind of just like part of a landscape or sort of a prop and that connects to the other thing we've been working on so that was fantastic that was like we thought we should jump on it <laughs> yes and with the help of people here like uh, the production Vicky and Simon, we just asked them like to put out a call the people that participated in Burton's film and they, if they were interested to do something with us. Uh, well, this video of Guy Mirror and Guy, in Guy Sherbing, Man in the Mirror, he had like this filming his talk of himself, uh, like handling this mirror 40 years ago, more or less, I, I guess. And he was like trying to capture the landscape and, the, and whatever and he kept it I think he discovered he discovered it later and he projected the film and he placed himself in front of the film and trying to play again with the mirror flipping the mirror but when he flipped the mirror the projection of himself younger was like projected there then when he flipped the, the, the way around you know against again was the, was the reflection of the mirror it was a very interesting game because when in the video you don't know what's happening really. Sometimes he gets younger, sometimes he gets he gets uh, older, sometimes uh, the the square shrinks. It's very a very interesting game. So we related this idea of the mirror with Alice, you know, through the looking glass and all this idea of the other and so on. I guess it, it uh, kind of signals to the continuity of the self, like. Um, yeah, positioning of oneself in a space, a collapsing space and time through image. We're super lucky to have Jess and Marek on board. They were like the one, some of the two ex, of the extras who worked in Tim Burton's film. Uh, Jess, yeah, working as an extra in the beginning of the film, and Marek at the end. And we went to the place where the beginning of the film was held, which is Anthony Anthony House, I, I believe. We worked with them in the script. We asked them to develop a bit more the character they played for the, 
Burton's film, trying to flesh out that uh, unknown character that is normally as an extra push back to just being a thing, almost, like a thing-like person. And yeah, they came up with actually really nice uh, ideas. Yeah, with this idea of the mirror, we thought we, we might bring together that character or that persona with their actual person or who they claim to be right now. It was quite a deep experience, I'd say. Um, so we had to do, um, we were doing like choreography with like mirrors and things like this, um, which over time, because I had to do it quite slowly, the mirror became like really, really heavy. And that was kind of like the physical side of it. But um, I guess they kind of asked me some quite deep questions on the audio um, part of the project. Um, and at the time they asked me, uh, who, who are you? Which um, I understand is sort of what the caterpillar asked Alice. Um, and I was kind of a bit like rabbit in the headlights at that time, because I was like, yeah, who am I, you know? Um, you can kind of rattle off that I could say, I've got like a first class honors degree in photography and I've won awards and all these sorts of, you know, but is that really who I am? You know, it was quite a profound and I was like, I think if I was to redo that, I'd say, um, I'm still learning who I am every day. We picked up, uh, the thing is chapter five from, from Alice, Alice in Wonderland. It's uh, where Alice meets the caterpillar. And uh, that's also why, where the title of this piece picks up its name. It's uh, advice from a caterpillar. Uh, and it's a moment where the caterpillar questions the identity of Alice and is mm. just in, in, uh, asking her like who are you and, and she's a bit uncertain and cannot pinpoint because she's been going through changes in, in, in the story getting large and small and, but I guess you could read it also as yeah that continuity of the self that never is fixated into one single um, being. And we also wanted to, like I said, like explore, explore it in relationship to space, to place, and like in this case to Plymouth, like to the story of the town. So we also uh, work with Jess and Merrick, uh, asking them about uh, the relationship to the city. Like, uh, for example, we wanted to, to know what what parts of town they would like to maybe change or remodel and, and why. Um, that's more or less how we end up in this area. Like uh, Jess's uh, idea was that, like she really likes coming here but she misses uh, the pier. Apparently there was a big pier here that was destroyed and she would like to have the pier back in the city. So you could say it's a reflection of the city itself and the main theme of Antonio and Eduardo's project was how the character we were in the film can relate to the city itself and our relation to the city and so you see a lot of that in sort of mirror of a reflection with you see Anthony Heiss one moment and the city the next and that was the main theme of it. We were asked to choose part of the city that we'd like to see improved that we feel needs a bit of love and attention really and so I generally I mentioned the west end of the city centre and through Union Street because with all of the concrete and brick boxes it looks very run down needs a bit of care and attention no it's, it's very important as a showcase the, the city and what the, what the, the people of the city themselves and their connection to it because it's the city obviously you've got the physical side of the city but it's the city the lifeblood you know, the city is vain really is the people and their identities and their stories and the cultures a lot of the oral histories that get passed down as well and this is a great opportunity to kind of try and preserve that the thing that was very important for us was also to consider uh, our collaborators 
like everyone involved in, in the project uh, as much as important or relevant as us like it's not just like oh I, I we have this thing and we want you to move like this and that like we propose the idea of okay we're going to use something that has been used before which is like a this technique developed by Gay Sherwin and we have been like sort of like connecting the dots like uh, highlighting certain relationships that might lay a bit forgotten or unseen uh, again try to make visible some things that are invisible for instance uh, what came out of it and it's not our idea it's just sort of what it is is that uh, one of the persons involved in this uh, that's Jess she was at the beginning of the film and and she was casted as a maid and then the other one, uh, Marek, he, he was at the end of the film, um, I mean about Burton, Tim Burton's film, and he was casted as a gentleman. So you immediately have like a beginning and end, uh, gender roles, class uh, roles, like um, the functionality of their characters within the supposed Victorian era. So, and, and then we wanted to connect like that with who they are in real life and today in 21st century like what does it mean then for a guy or a girl or people that define themselves as a, as a woman or as a man like uh, to embrace that other kind of persona or and again how they relate to the town they live in what they think the history of their characters might have been in the past if those characters were real you know, and like, yeah, try to fold all that and and again, not just define it and give it to someone and say, look, this is it, like, the, here are the answers, but rather point to those paradoxical and conflictive relationships that I guess will resonate and with more people living and in, in working and making the city of Plymouth what it is.